Hello, uh, welcome back to our uh, program of uh, eShikshana. And uh, this is Professor Uma Rao from RV College of Engineering, bringing you the lectures on transmission and distribution under eShikshana program. So we have seen something briefly about the history of evolution of transmission systems and the different conductors used. And uh, in this session, we will see about SAG and how to calculate SAG when supports are at the same level and when supports are at different levels. So in my last session, I told you about support. So supports are primarily the poles or the towers. So the conductor is, you know, stretched between the supports. So you would have seen two poles and a conductor running uh, between them. Now the issue is, what if I stretch it very tightly? So you imagine you have two hooks and you're tying a string very tightly. So what will happen is the string is likely to snap because of excessive uh, tension, because of excessive tension in the string. Therefore, what I do is I don't stretch it very tightly. I give a slight uh, laxity in the uh, stretch. Because of this, what will happen? the conductor or string or rope or whatever you tie will sag. Okay, that means it will come down because of its weight. I had given you in the previous session the analogy of a clothes line. So when you when you stretch a clothes line between two hooks and when you, you know, even by itself over a period, it will come down. And we all have that experience in the house that after some one or two years, we again pull, pull it and make it straight because it would have sagged by its own weight, okay? Apart from other things, we will see what it is. So here, just see here, A and B, let us say, are two supports. So this horizontal, uh, so they're, they're some above the ground. Let, let us say there are two poles, the tip of two poles, A and B, and both the poles are of the same height. And AOB is the conductor. So if I stretch the conductor tightly between A and B, then it is likely to snap because of excessive tension. So I, I slightly loosen it. So because of that, what happens? It will sag. Now, this is in a very exaggerated picture. It doesn't become a bowl like this and sag so much. There'll be a small sag. We will see how much it will sag. So what are, what are all the uh, precautions I have to take? Now, see, I might have a tree nearby. I have two poles and there may be a tree nearby. And when, the, when this line between them sags, the lowest point may touch the tree. I have to be careful about that. Or there might be a second story building or a three story building and the lowest line may touch the building. So we have to be very clear about clearances between the ground. So it is not enough if I just determine the clearance between the ground and the pole tip but also between the ground and the lowest point of the conductor because the conductor is going to sag. So these are some design aspects we have to be careful about uh, when we design the clearances and choose the material for the conductor. So is it mandatory? Yes, because it protects the conductor from excessive tension. This is a problem only with overhead lines, not with underground cables. See, in underground cables, I support it on the ground. There is no gravity there. It is supported in a trench or a pipe on the ground. Whereas overhead conductors, they're stretched between poles above the ground. So SAG is predominantly a problem only with overhead lines. So we, are, we allow them to SAG to protect them from snapping or just uh, cutting. Because when the wind is, you know, if it's very tight, then when the wind pressure is there, it will just snap. Whereas if you give us a small sag, it may swing. The whole conductor may, may swing and it will not become detached from its support. So sag is mandatory. Sag is mandatory uh, for proper functioning. It is intentionally given. Now, uh, when supports are in the same level, the curve, the line forms, you know, that curve which I showed you, it's called as a catenary. It's called as a catenary. That curve is called as a catenary. It looks similar to a parabola. 
it looks similar to a parabola. Catenary, you would have seen everywhere bridges, you know, uh, uh, they all have it. And then uh, uh, cables, uh, cables which are used for traveling. Uh, also, or they, they, they all form a catenary. And the sag is very small compared to the length of the line. That's why I told you the picture I showed you is very exaggerated. It doesn't sag by large amounts. It will be a small amount. And uh, this is one thing you have to remember. And at every point along the conductor, the tension will act tangential. Okay, tangential to the conductor. That is the direction of the tension. And horizontal component of the tension is uniform throughout the length of the conductor. Throughout AOB, it is uniform. And see here. Yeah, if you take this AOB, the tension acts tangentially at every point, acts tangentially at every point. And it is maximum at the supports and minimum at the lowest point. So it is maximum at A and B and minimum at O. Clear? So these are some features of the sag. Now let us see what are the problems. If the sag is too low, that means very small, tightly stretched, tension will be very high, very high tension. So the conductor length required is less because I have stretched it tightly. AB is the shortest route. Okay. And because of that, I can have lower supports because there is no sag, the support can be lower. I don't have to account for the sag. However, if sag is too high, tension will be too small. You will require a lot of conductor length and the support height also will have to increase. I told you the reasons. It should not touch a building or it should not touch a tree or it should not be so low that, you know, a lorry which is loaded will touch the line. All these are, you know, very important, especially in urban uh, places where you have a lot of transport, etc. Okay, so these are all uh, the features you have to consider when you think of what is the maximum or minimum sag you will permit. It shouldn't be too high, it shouldn't be too low. So what are all the factors which affect the sag? One is the weight of the conductor itself. Because of its natural weight itself, it sags. You tie any, any, any string, any rope, anything, after some time, you'll find it slowly bends over a period. So that period will depend on the material of the rope. And any weight on the rope. So what weight will a transmission line have? Ice, ice may fall, ice, snow, hailstorms. Okay, all these will fall and they will pull it down. They'll, they'll act as additional weight on the conductor. And wind, wind may try to push it laterally. So these are all some things which affect the sac. And the span length, that is the length of the span, is determined by the distance between the conductors. And it is directly proportional to the span. Longer the, directly proportional to the sac. Longer the span, more the sac. And it also depends on the temperature. Because we are using conductors. So with raise in temperature, the heat will be more in the conductor and therefore it is more likely to sag. And also the tension in the conductor. Please remember, you can't have a low tension and a low sag. You have a high tension, a low sag, or a low tension and a high sag. This, this is what it is. So you can't have both a low tension and a low sag. So let us see now how we um, calculate. Now for every conductor, there is something called as a tensile strength, ultimate tensile strength. Okay, so what does that mean? That is the, how much of stress can it withstand before it breaks? How much of stress can it withstand before it breaks? Got it? Say I have a pencil. Pencil is stiff, but it's not unbreakable. So I, I try to break it. So what is at what strength will it break? That is the ultimate tensile strength. So in, instead of a pencil made of wood, supposing I have a pencil made of steel, 
then I don't think uh, for me it is possible to break it because it's tensile strength is very high. Whereas if I have a chalk, I can break it very easily. So uh, you are understanding the meaning of the tensile strength. So different materials have different tensile strengths. So normally we design, we adjust the tension such that it is 50% of its ultimate tensile strength. So that means I give a factor of safety of two. I told you what is the meaning of factor of safety. Extra precaution I take. So I am giving a tension and the conductor can withstand double that. So what am I doing by this? One is I'm going to get a sag because of this. But the advantage I get is because its tensile strength is double, it will not break un unless it is extreme condition. Like there is heavy snowing or, you know, winds of huge, uh, very large velocity, it will not break. Are you getting the point? So generally in the design of the lines, a factor of safety of two is used. Minimum of two is used. So now uh, just look at this figure and uh, let us get uh, some uh, things very clear. I'm going to give you a very small derivation to uh, find out how much is the sack. How much is the sack? Now let us see with respect to this figure what all uh, we can uh, define. So A and B are support points. So these are the pole tips. Let us say I have a pole, two poles at A and B. So A is the tip of one pole and B is the tip of another pole and both are at the same level. So the span is AB. Span is the shortest distance between A and B is span. So the conductor length is more than the span because if I keep it exactly to the span, it will have high tension. So it is more. So let us say, let us say the span length is L, L, and so the midpoint. So naturally, since both are at the same level, the maximum sag will be at the midpoint. It will it will take the shape of what we call as a catenary. This is a catenary. This shape is a catenary. You would have seen all the catenary in your bridges, cables, all those uh, you would have seen. Okay. So this O is the least uh, point. That is the point where the bend is maximum. The deviation is maximum. That point is called as O. Right. Length L is the length of the span. So I have L by 2, L by 2 from the center. From the center. Now I take some arbitrary point P. I take an arbitrary point P that is at a distance of X, horizontal distance of X from O and vertical distance Y from O. So if I consider this lowest point O as the origin, if I consider this lowest point O as the origin, the point P is at points X, Y with respect to the origin. And we already defined sag. Sag S is the distance between the lowest point and the support. So between O and O, you know, O and A or O and B. Since A and B are at same heights, O, you know, the distance is the same, the vertical distance, not the length of the conductor. So the length of the conductor is A, O, B. The length of the conductor is A, O, B. That is more than L, more than the span. T is the tension. T is the tension and it acts tangentially, I told you. So I have shown you the direction of T at point O. It acts tangentially. So I hope you have registered everything about the diagram. So now let us see. L is the distance between the supports in meters. W is the weight of the conductor per meter. That will depend on what material you use. So when we discuss materials, we told some have, will have more sag, some will have less sag, some are more temperature resistant, some are less temperature resistant and so on. P is the tension. P is the um, coordinates of XY with respect to O. And uh, the curvature is so small. The curvature is so small. That means I told you it doesn't sag by a very large amount. So as an approximation, this length OP, I will assume it to be equal to X. 
it will be slightly greater than x okay but not very much greater because the curve is very small compared to the span the how much of sag it undergoes is very less s is very small compared to l so i make an approximation that op is approximately equal to x it is x plus delta x so i'll assume it to be approximately equal to x and the tension at any point acts tangentially so at the lowest point it will act horizontal because horizontal is the tangent at the lowest point so these are some uh, things about the diagram now we will see there are two forces acting on the segment op right one is just see here we'll go back so what are the uh, two forces acting on op one is the weight of the conductor itself so this op is the conductor arc segment conductor segment op is a conductor segment so it has some weight it has some weight right so i assume that this weight acts at the center w w is the weight per meter w is the weight per meter x is the length of the conductor because i have assumed op is approximately equal to x therefore the total weight of the conductor segment op is wx and where will it act i assume it acts in the center of that segment so since p p is at a distance of x from o the midpoint will be at a distance of x by 2 is it clear so this is one weight which acts on this segment that is the weight of the conductor this is one load one force which is acting on that and the tension t which is acting horizontally at point o so if you take the segment op i have the weight of the conductor which i assume acts at the center and i have the tangential force at point o so we have two forces and for equilibrium it must be balanced okay the two moments due to the two forces must be balanced we all know this from the law of moments now py that is this is the moment due to the tension so that is equal to t into the vertical distance y okay you know you know the moment moment is force into distance so t is acting horizontally so i take the vertical distance and wx is acting vertically so i take the horizontal distance i take the horizontal distance just again okay, you just see here the moment due to t will be t into t is acting horizontally so t into the vertical distance y and wx is acting vertically so wx into the horizontal distance x by 2 so these are the two moments and they must be equal for equilibrium and the system is in equilibrium if it's not in equilibrium it will snap if if the weight is more it will snap down if the tangential moment is more it gets you know pulled towards the other support so if it is remaining steady means that they are in equilibrium clear so therefore i get py is equal to wx into x by 2 this is the moment due to the tension t and this is the moment due to the weight wx so from this i get weight uh, so from this i get y equal to wx squared by 2t so you see again wx squared by 2t this that is i am getting the vertical distance of point p i am getting the vertical distance of point p which is at a distance horizontal distance of x from the origin now let me shift p closer and closer to the support till this p coincides with b then the vertical distance is nothing but the sag that's our definition sag is the distance vertical distance from the support to the lowest point so when p goes to the support point b then what is x x will be l by 2 l by 2 right so here i have derived i have derived the general sag for any any arbitrary point x so at the extreme ends x will be l by 
because my P would have shifted to the uh, support point. So I substitute X is L by two and this Y, the vertical distance is nothing but a sag. So I get by substituting Y is S and X as L by two, I get a very nice expression for sag. S is equal to W L squared by eight T. W L squared by eight T. Clear? So L is the span, the distance between the supports. T is the tension you are allowing it to withstand, which is about 50% of the ultimate tensile strength. So you can calculate the sag. You can calculate the sag. And once you know the sag, the length of the conductor is given by this relationship. There are a lot of approximations. So you get it from the catenary um, derivation. So the length of the conductor is given by L into 1 plus W square L squared by 24 T square, or you can even use this, 1 plus 8 S squared by 3 L square. What is this L? L is the AOB, the entire length of the conductor. It is more than L. L is the span length. If I take the conductor straight, it will be L. But if I permit a sag S, it will be given by this expression. Clear? Very simple. Calculations are very simple and we will see some example. So here, the ultimate strength and weight of an overhead conductor is 10,000 newtons. And 6 newton per meter. If the factor of safety is 5, so you remember the units of both should be the same. You can take it in newton, then it will be newton per meter. If you take the weight in kg per meter, then the ultimate strength also should be in kgs here yeah. so if the factor of safety is five this is very high this is just illustrative i told you normally best preferred is two and the span length is 180 meter determine the sag and the total length of the line between the spans that means the conductor length so w is equal to six newton per meter data is given tension is 10,000 newtons is the ultimate strength. So the permitted tension is divided by factor of safety. So it is 2,000. And L is 180. Okay, very simple. SAG, you directly have a formula for SAG. So S is equal to WL squared by HT. W is 6. L is 180 meters. And H and tension is 2,000. So in using this formula, only thing you have to ensure is the units of W and T are the same. Okay, you should have the same units. And so I get 12.15 meter. You see that is less than 10%. The span length is 180 meters. So you, I told you, you know, the sag is much less compared to the span length. That too, this is because you have taken a high factor of safety. If you take a lower factor of safety, um, then uh, tension will be more. So sag will be less. Sag will be less. Then we have a formula for the length of the conductor. So I just substitute, I substitute and I get 182.18 meters. So if I have stretched it tightly, if I had stretched it tightly, 180 meters would have been enough. 180 meters would have been enough. Now I need an additional 2.18 meters to allow for the sack. Yes. SAG means slightly more conductor, means slightly more money, but fine. That's better than having the line snap off. So we do permit it. So you should notice here that the SAG is proportional to the weight of the conductor. So heavier conductors, more SAG. That will help you to determine which, what type of material you need to use for the conductor. And it's proportional to the span length. Longer the span length, more the SAG. Why proportional? It's L squared. Okay. So it, it will increase a square of the span length. And it's inversely proportional to tension. More the tension, lesser the sag. So lesser the factor of safety, lesser the sag. Clear? So these are all some things obviously visible from the mathematical relationship. S is equal to WL squared by 8.
let us take uh, one more example. A line conductor weighs 780 kg per 1000 meters and has a span of 300 meters. Calculate the allowable sag if the maximum tension is 1500 kg. So you see there we use Newtons, here we are using kg, but both should be the same. So in, the, in, the, in our formula, remember W is the weight per meter. So it is 780 by 1000. 0.78 kg per meter. W is equal to 0.78 kg per meter. And L is equal to 300. And T is equal to 1500. That is the maximum tension. It's not the tensile strength. That's the allowable tension. Simple. You directly substitute W L squared by HT. You get 5.85 meters. So that is the psych permitted. Okay. So using this formula, you can calculate the sag for a given tension or you can uh, calculate uh, if, if your permitted sag is given, you can calculate what is the tension and from that arrive at the factor of safety. So that will help you to choose the material. So one simple equation can help you to design the system for a particular value of 